Hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. On the Bitcoin chart, I have taken the white wave count now of the chart. While it's still valid, um, obviously not our favorite scenario at the moment. Therefore, I've taken it off the chart also to make the chart look a little bit more clean. So we only have the yellow wave count on the chart, which is the more direct bullish scenario. And then the green wave count. The green wave count is the scenario in which we would expect a rally after the next low, but it would likely be a corrective rally. So let me explain again as we're heading into the weekend. First of all, let me delete those dots down there. Don't need them. Oops. So, yeah, so we've got two scenarios on the chart. I think that makes it easier and cleaner. Just understand that the price can, of course, turn around instantly to the upside. Um, that would be the white count that I talked about because it's not invalidated, price did not break below the June low. However, this has become quite a, an unlikely count because price has retraced basically too much to make this a likely scenario. So we focus on the yellow one. In the yellow wave count, we have um, here our one, two, one, two setup. And the second one, two setup consists of an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave. And in this scenario, price made a high B wave, is now coming down in the C wave. The C wave would typically be a five wave move. And we would still expect another low because if we make that a bit larger, price has only, price has only come down in three waves, as you can see. One, two, three. This might be the fourth wave, which is currently unfolding. And for five waves, we would like to see another low below the 17th of August low. Someone rightly pointed out in the comments that whenever we expect another low, well, sometimes it just doesn't happen. And that's what I've been talking about over the last few weeks. That's correct. That is just, you need to know how different asset classes behave. And the crypto market, especially Bitcoin, Ethereum, they sometimes finish their corrections without that last low. We just need to know that cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, they, they just like to finish their corrections early sometimes, but you can never tell before. So that's something that we can purely just point out for people to understand and for people to deal with it. Yeah, um, We can only give that information and then leave it to subscribers and viewers um, to, to, you know, to use that information. But the thing is, we cannot confirm that a correction is over if it's an early completion um, until we see a five wave move above resistance in the other direction. So until then, we have to expect five waves down. Now, you will remember that most recently here on the way down, we were waiting for another low and it was good that we were waiting for another low and did not call a low in place prematurely because that additional low happened, even though it was very aggressive, but we were waiting for another low and I did not call a bottom in place, even though a lot of people got bullish on this move up. Um, so it's always worth either to wait for that one more low or to wait at least for confirmation that the low is already in, which we get after five waves up above resistance and a three wave pullback. So again, yeah, cryptos are the asset class that sometimes likes to finish the correction early. That's the case, but you can never really bet money on it. Okay, I think that's sort of how we need to summarize it. So we're waiting for another low basically to around about 24K next. Could also go lower, but that's the next milestone. After the next low then, we have the possibility that price either rallies in a third wave higher. Yeah, it would go in a third wave to around about 40K plus, or it will, because of the deep decline that we've had, just fill in the green wave count, which will be that this year, what we highlight as ABC structure is just a larger A wave. It would then move up in a B wave and then come down in an even larger C wave. Now, short term, this doesn't matter at all because both scenarios in both scenarios, we would expect a bit of a rally. The impulsive rally obviously being much more aggressive. The corrective rally could also be quite substantial. So if we talk about a rough target here, or we talk about potentially, I mean, if we make another low, we might talk about 28K to 30K for the B wave. It could also go higher. You can get these high B waves and then come down. Yeah. So in the short term, it doesn't matter if we see 
you know, for example, I did, I start, you know, I, I'm scaling into these areas. I did um, around 26,200, I think, last time. Um, and if we see that rally happen and we see it's corrective, then, you know, profit taking is definitely something that uh, is reasonable with another C wave to the downside to come to basically buy again a little bit lower, to reset a little bit lower. So it's actually quite nice to do that, to get a cheaper um, to get Bitcoin a little bit cheaper while profit taking a little bit higher. So that's one way of dealing with it. Um, of course, if it goes higher in a third wave, even better. Um, what else to highlight? I think that's pretty much it on the on the larger time frame. Now let's go to the one hour chart. On the one hour chart, we still see our triangle. This is unchanged from the previous video. So as I said, we might get a boring weekend, boring triangle weekend. I wanted to talk about the E-wave a little bit. So we've got two possibilities here still how that last wave down could happen. Um, again, 27,720 is the key level that if broken to the upside, we have to consider a low is already in place. Until then, we're either dealing with the triangle count in yellow, A, B, C, D, E. This is a five wave move, triangles, and the E wave, in my opinion, is still outstanding. I don't even have a clear confirmation that the D wave low has been made, but it could have been made. The ideal target was reached. So we could possibly assume that the E-wave has started. The funny thing is an E-wave could also be a triangle. So an E-wave consists of an ABC structure, A-wave, B-wave, C-wave. This is how you would normally expect. Uh, one second, let me just change that. Let me just, so yeah, okay. So an E-wave is an ABC structure typically. It can also be a triangle. Uh, it's not that common, but it's also not impossible. So it's it's something that E-waves like to do. Um, if a wave within a triangle is a uh, if a wave within a triangle is a triangle, it's the E-wave typically. So it would be A wave, B wave, C wave, D wave, E wave. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> so very very boring. Um, something we need to watch out for. But it's it doesn't really matter so much. I mean, you don't really want to get get you know you don't want to become a slave of the micro counts. I mean. Sometimes people ask me, you know, is, is the B wave finished of that triangle? I mean, you know, a lot of this is speculative in a triangle. So just show you the relevant um, counts also for educational purposes, but they are not really predictive within a triangle. We can just track the roadmap here and get an idea. Okay, when is the triangle technically finished based on probabilities and when do we need to look for a move down? But this can change quickly. But yeah, this is sort of how the triangle could develop and then obviously a break below 25,380 would confirm the break to the downside. The white wave count suggests that the wave four is already finished. Um, it would be a WXY structure, but it doesn't make a difference in the short term because then also we should see a move to the downside. Yeah, that's my update about um, Bitcoin. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.